Hi, my name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And this is another video going over the free VSTs available via LANDR's blog, Lander's blog, about the best quote unquote free VST instruments and effects. Um, I suggest this blog a lot to people, this post a lot to people when they're asking for what uh, synths they should get that are free. And I thought I'd, you know, actually go through it and see whether or not any of them were any good. So we did a video about effects already maybe a couple videos. I don't know how I've edited them together. So I'll share you this list with you so you have what I'm using. Um, I needed it to be available for Mac and PC. I needed it to be 64-bit. Um, if it isn't, it's not here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, some of these work, some of them don't, some of them suck, some of them are great. So we're gonna start off with these ones by Alan Vista here. All of these are a bunch of like sampled percussion ones. Um, you have some interesting things. You have some bells, you have some clavinets, you have some things that if you have Ableton, you probably have access to already, but that doesn't mean that it's not nice to have other versions, I guess. They all sound really good. So, you know, you got all kinds of nifty stuff in here. I recommend you check them out. They're free. Here's a marimba. It's a pretty nice marimba. So um, the one I actually like the most here are the rototoms because I use rototoms a lot as fills and uh, I always forget where I keep my, my favorite rototoms, but these are my favorite rototoms now. And look at this, they're gay. The rototoms are gay. How could you ask for anything else? Thank you, gay rototoms. Ample sound bass. This is a sampled bass. It's a light version of their thing. Um, if you have Ableton, you also have a sampled bass. Um, but this is pretty nice. Look at all these options here. I think this is a really, really good sounding bass. Um, you have a ton of options here to mess with your sound. Um, you can choose different playing modes. This is basically like if you had contact, uh, the basses would be like, you know, around this quality. And that's saying a lot, this is free. So if you need a uh, electric bass sound, check out this one. This is really, really good. Next is the Juice VST. So this one's really, really cool. Kind of a chip, chip tuny thing. Let's see. Listen to that. That's super nice. So let's see uh, what's going on here. Um, well, there's two different modes. There's DDoS box or DOS box and Z Doom. Um, uh, I'm assuming these are two different sort of chip tune algorithms. You can hear they have a pretty uh, big effect on the way that it sounds. You have different waveforms. Really nice lo fi uh, waveforms. And it looks like you can change the octave right here. I don't know what this does. I don't care. Vibrato on or off. I'm not really hearing any vibrato. That should theoretically change that there. So you can get some nice chip tuny leads. That's beautiful. I love it. Um, and then um, it's using either FM or additive to bring in another one here. Each one has an independent envelope. Oh, these go backwards. I see. That's weird. So this is going to be my chiptune synth uh, go-to forever now. Uh, I really, really, really like this, and it's free. So that's a thumbs up for the juice. What's next? Dext. Dext is the premier um, VST for FM synthesis. 
And uh, it looks terrifying, doesn't it? Um, if you're familiar with FM synthesis, you're probably familiar with some of the software synths like FM8 and the like. Um, this is basically a DX7 compatible software version of uh, FM synth. So that means that the classic DX7 FM synth that broke FM synthesis into the world, um, this is the thing that will play all of the patches from that as well as anything that you can make in here. You can see here that there are all these cartridges. These are all presets over here. Um, I'm not really going to do this justice because there are a billion, billion sounds if you don't want to make your own. And if you do want to make your own, then you can mess with this if you want to. Having an FM synth in your repertoire is a really, really good thing to have. And uh, this one is free and it's amazing. So there's no reason not to have this. So go get it. Go get Dext. Recomendo. Next up is one of my favorites called Helm. Let's see. So I can't import my own wavetables, but I can actually, would this actually be considered a wavetable? I don't know. I mean, it is pulling waves from a table, but wavetable synths usually have more complicated waves and you can import your own. So you can see that I am scrolling through some of the classic waveforms here, like, tr uh, you know, sine triangle square saw and then uh, inverse saw. And then we start getting into these weird bit reduced versions of things. And uh, there's two oscillators here and a sub oscillator. Got a nice readout of the uh, thing there. Now this mod is where I started to think, is this a wavetable synth? Pigeon mem, is this a wavetable synth? That cross mod gets some really cool stuff going on. So you have some basic things like being able to tune each oscillator individually. Down here is a sub that you can. And a noise oscillator, which is always good to have. So what else is going on here? Let's see, what does this do? So what I just did was uh, turned on this little thing here, which allows you to press any of these green things and have this uh, LFO, this modulation source, modulate the thing that you've sent it to. So I now have this LFO modulating that mod thing, which I really, really liked. And uh, it's like you have... the same kinds of controls that you would have, or excuse me, the same kind of waveforms that you would have for the oscillators, which is pretty cool. So let's turn the frequency down on this. I like that transpose thing, so let's do this. All right, let's go some some of the presets. able to morph through two different uh, filter types is really, really nice. Uh, that's really, really sweet. Snapping down to the zero there is a little annoying. 
it snaps there, which means that it's hard to move smoothly between the two. I'm sure there's a way to get around that. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's some pretty nasty basses in here as well. Yeah, I really like that. Anyways, Helm is a really, 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 really great free resource. Uh, I can't recommend it enough if you want some really awesome digital sort of serum-esque things going on. So get yourself some Helm. Okie dokie. Next up is Cinna. So what do we got going on here? A series of waves that you can choose from. Do we have an init patch? No, I would not call those init patches. I kind of understand what they're doing there, but uh, those aren't enough, enough for me. So let's find out what's going on here by turning everything off. Let's turn the feedback down. Let's turn our attack down. Here's our envelope section here. There is an interesting filter here that uh, seems to have a band reject and a high pass and low pass. Let's turn off the reverb. Let's turn off that for now. Turn off these for now. There we go. Okay, now we're kind of at an init patch. There's a bass wave. Clicking on this is what moves it around and it looks like we're adding harmonics. Same there, a noise oscillator. We can switch between poly and monophonic, which is good if you wanna do leads or uh, pads. And then a uh, an octave up or down. So you can see see that this ADSR here, the envelope, is attached to the harmonics. It's, you can turn that off and on. Same thing with the wave. It looks like um, the wave and the harmonics can be assigned to be modulated by the envelope. you can kind of hear there. Um, also the velocity sensitivity. So already by turning that on, I'm getting some interesting. Variations. Okay. So we've established that that's happening there. This delay matrix. Let's see. Three delays. Which, when they're all turned on, the stereo with is turned up. It's pretty nice. All right, so if I had to clarify what this sounds like to me, it sounds as if it's a combination sort of like vocal um, slash, uh, string synth, um, thing like, uh, the old Selena's and stuff like that, which were really, really cool for, uh, strings and choir sounds back in the day. If I had this signal dry, if I turned off the reverb, this would make an excellent vocoder. That's really nice. So very unique uh, sounding synth there, Cinna. Um, I don't think I've actually used something that sounds like that before, so I'm going to keep that around. Next is the Sinister Sinister. Okie dokie. What do we got here? Three oscillator synth. Nice bass waveforms. Looks like we got uh, 
triangle, triangle, triangle. And let's go ahead and turn off these other ones. So we can hear. <gasps> oh. You can go to a saw from a saw wave to a triangle wave. Very nice. And there's our pulse width modulation on the square wave. Nick Bat would be happy. I mean, you can hear why he likes pulse width modulation so much. It's actually pretty nice. Okay, anyways. Gain per oscillator, pan per oscillator, coarse tuning, and fine tuning. Okay. Oh, is that a right click reset value? Yes, it is. Lovely. Okay, so we have three oscillators. We have three envelopes. So this is the volume envelope. All right, so this is gonna affect everything. So let's do this. Let's turn on these two. Let's turn them up. So we're gonna send envelope two to the gain of this guy. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, that's pretty damn cool. So I'm able to uh, independently do volume pan and stuff um, on all of these based on any other modulators. And we haven't even gotten through the whole synth yet. Cool. So here's our LFOs. Why don't we assign LFO two to the pulse width of our of our oscillator one there? Now we have to turn it up. some really cool controls here um fade in for the lfo which i always like i like that for vibrato um frequency of the thing obviously and uh the thing that you should keep in mind here is that every single one of these modulators the envelopes and the lfos can actually be modulated by something else so i could have oh and so it's not a complete thing so i could have the mod wheel affect the frequency of this thing i could have aftertouch do that um that's, that's some pretty nice options filters two filters that's good Dual filters are always nice. Okay, and then what do we have for effects? We have a delay, which is always good. like that. So, I mean, that was just one example of what I could do with that. Um, there's a ton of modulation options there. The uh, bass oscillator sound really good. And um, there's a step sequencer, as you can see right in front of me. Once I wrap my head around that one a little bit more, that's going to be a pretty, pretty awesome, simple synth. And that's a great combination if, if they're simple and powerful at the same time. If they're like on the front end, they look really, really simple. Uh, but once you actually figure them out, they're amazing. 
All right, Synth One, this thing has been around forever, and you're going to look at the interface and you're going to be like, well, that's understandable. I don't have the banks uh, loaded up, so there are no presets. But this thing is basically a Nord Lead 2, um, which is really cool. Um, it sounds good. It's been around forever. There are a ton of presets for it. Um, Let's see what we got going on. So, um, multiple waveforms with detune and FM, a great sub bass with multiple waveforms you can pick from, and a zero octave or negative one octave, adjustable second oscillator. Get a little arpeggiator there going on. Here's uh, your ADSR. Turn this insane down. Let's see. Um, some cool options in terms of uh, FM and stuff like that. It has an FM envelope. Look at that, like, Psytrance. Uh, classic Psytrance arpeggiator sound going on. Um, cool. Two LFOs with a number of different places they can go. Um, and uh, some effects. So uh, I'm not exactly sure what these stand for, um, but we have different phasers and uh, distortion effects, decimators, and then a couple controls over each one. That's a ring mod. It's a phaser. God, this thing screams trance at me. And that's not bad. <laughs> it's nice to have a synth that uh, you can reach for that sounds like that. Um, don't be put off by how ugly it is. This thing is is legit and has been around for a really long time. It's a classic. It's a powerhouse. Um, I recommend Synth 1 heavily. I'm glad that I reinstalled it for, for this video. Tal Baseline did not install or uh, wasn't 64-bit or something, so we're going to move to the Tal Electro. Tal makes a lot of really good free stuff, but they also make a lot of good paid stuff too. So what do we got? It is a 1-2 two, two oscillator with a sub. Uh, we have a mixer section for three oscillators and noise, which is pretty standard. Um, a filter section with bandpass, high pass, and low pass. Two envelopes, a mod envelope and a volume envelope, and two LFOs. So very, very, very simple. Um, but how does it sound? Pretty beefy. Oh, we have sync for the oscillators. That's nice. Oh, that filter sounds really good. That's a beefy filter. Get some sub in there. Oh, that filter has its own envelope right fucking here. Sorry, guys. I'm an idiot. Let's see. Let's go through some presets. That's lovely. That's a really nice bass. Also a really nice bass. This is a really beefy sounding uh, synth we got here. So good at basses. Let's see. I don't care about drums. I don't care about effects. Let's do some leads. So the mod wheel is uh, assigned to the 
a high pass, which is kind of nifty. And the pitch bend is assigned to a cutoff frequency. It's also kind of interesting. What else we got? So a uh, pretty beefy sounding synth uh, for a free synth. Um, I remember thinking when I was using Massive how much I liked the bass saw wave sound of it. And sometimes I would just go Massive just to grab a clean saw. This thing is giving that a run for its money and I like it. Tal Electro 2, you're okay in my book. What's triple cheese? Triple, triple cheese. I don't know. I like cheese. Oh God. <laughs> Fucking Christ, that's ugly. <laughs> Luscious cheesy comb synthesizer. I can't look at this interface. I'm sorry. It may sound amazing, but I can't. I can't look at the interface. Let's see what this baby does. It's a nice interface. Okay. It's big. Saw preset. What am I looking at here? Is there an init patch? Uh, I don't really know what these people think of when they think of an init patch, but um, I don't think this is what I think of when I think of an init patch. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, you can choose how many voices you want to play. So you can choose um, monophonic or uh, multiple phonic. Okay, so ooh, we'll get to this. But um, so if you want to tune this to something uh, that's not normally a uh, normal tuning, you can use that, and that's really nice. Um, I do like that control quite a bit. But this slop control, introducing some analog slop uh, drift in the oscillator is very very nice. That's a great thing. And then glide. If I turn this down to one over here, so I get a monophonic thing, and turn this up, I'll get a portamento lead. which is dope. I like that. Uh, polyphonic portamento doesn't make any sense though. So we'll turn that down. Okay. Generator. Okay. Oh, that's why it sounds so crazy. So there's this like a unison synth um, stacking oscillators on top of each other. So we have it all the way up at 10. Oh, I promise I won't do that again. Okay, that's pretty cool. Big, big sound there. So, frequency of that low pass. Uh, I really wish people would program a volume compensating resonance frequency because when you turn this up, you just lose all the volume. Filter is nothing really special to me. I do like that I have these multiple ones I can turn on. That's nice. Especially a notch filter. Uh, let's go ahead and send an LFO to, there we go. Notch cutoff. Oh, visual feedback. That's very nice. I like that quite a bit. This is not being responsive at all. Oh, okay, there we go. That's a little strange. So before we were just kind of like, uh, we didn't actually have an envelope on the sound at all, I guess. Just a little strange way of doing it. I like this. Re release this. There we go. I like to make pads to see if I like a synth.
I will admit that, that is very nice. And there's all these effects here too. I don't want it that wet. Room size, give me a gigantic hole. <laughs> Yeah, that's really nice. Ooh, a formant? No kidding, no. Okay, so this is this is the string synth slash choral synth that I have been looking for. Um, if I want to make synthetic choir or string sounds, this is the baby right here. Tunefish, yes. Gigantic thumbs up. All right, what's next? Tyrell... And six. So uh, UHE has been giving away a lot of good stuff. And uh, the Tyrell, I think, is pretty dope. Let's see. What's going on here? Oscillators. One, two. I don't know what T-Mod is. Um, two LFOs. A mod matrix. Two envelopes. And a filter. All right. Nice, beefy saw wave. Oh, so the um, oscillator waveform shape is uh, sweepable throughout the entire thing. That's cool. Sometimes you have to like, actually most of the time, you have to like click. So you can choose an infinitely, you can choose an infinitely sweepable thing there between um, square and sign. I'm gonna go like here. So a little fidgety in the UI, hard to get back to that zero point. I really think people should include a double click to return to zero or right click to return to and, and uh, reset. Oscillator mod PWM. Interesting. Okay. Pretty big with a sub in. It's nice. Noise. A ring modulator. And a feedback thing. Yeah. All right, now that we have this gigantic sound, let's go ahead. ADSR2, yes. Give me that. ADSR2 is this one. Okay, really snappy envelopes. That's really nice. Yeah, that's a really nice sounding uh, thing. That's it. So it happens when we get the. It's a nice sounding filter too. All right, cool. Um, LFOs and stuff like that. I don't really care. Mod matrix looks fine. Um, oh, well, that's cute. I like that. Nicely done. Oh, and there's a chorus down here too. I wonder what this is supposed to be emulating. A Juno? Sounds like a Juno chorus. I just went from zero to a hundred right there with this sound though. I'll tell you what. But you can do really nice like progressive house plucks with this too. Yeah, that's really nice. I will keep that. Um, absolutely. Here's a fun one. VST speak. Speak. So what this does is it renders whatever you type in here as a little wave file or a little sample file and then plays it back with a bunch of settings. So um, let's go ahead and type something in. Meow. 
So if you ever wanted to make like a little melody out of something stupid like this, you can. Ow. That's all she wrote for the free VSTs from the Lander blog. Thank you for watching. This is Jeremy for it means recording. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.